Russian troops withdraw from a strategic East Ukraine town to avoid being surrounded by the Ukrainian military. New gas pipelines flow in both Poland and Bulgaria, loosening their dependence on Russian energy. The EU says the new connections mean freedom. The Russian Ministry of Defense says its troops have left the strategic town of Liman in eastern Ukraine. A ministry spokesperson was quoted by Russian news agencies as saying that the withdrawal was carried out because of a threat of encirclement. Well, earlier the Ukrainian military said that its troops were inside the town. Liman is a strategic target. It was used by Russia as a major logistics hub and it sits in the Donetsk region, which the government in Moscow has just declared to be part Part of Russia. Well, video footage shared online shows Ukrainian soldiers waving their national flags on the outskirts of the city. We can't actually verify exactly where this flag raising is taking place. Well, Alina Frolova is a former deputy defense minister of Ukraine, now the deputy chairman of the Center for Defense Strategy think tank, and she told me more about the significance of this development. You know that yesterday Russia declared so-called uh, like a um, uh, referendums and then uh, actually declared this territory to be the Russian territory. And uh, this is actually the first released town out of uh, those who, which were declared. Uh, however, it also have a very important operational uh, meaning because it's like a connection hub and because it's also beginning of the um, uh, quite big advance at the Donetsk region, we believe so. So, yes, it's very cru critical to stress that Liman is in the Donetsk area, one of those regions that Russia is now claiming as part of it. But, of course, we're seeing Russian troops leave. So I wonder what that means for those other territories like Donetsk and also further down in the south of uh, Luhansk as well nearby, but also Zaporizhia. Uh, any advance means a lot because uh, we uh, like uh, then destruct the routes which they can connect with. The, we destruct the logistics. We move out the artillery from these cities. Uh, but the principle, this counteroffensive, is important for Ukrainians because uh, this is continuation of uh, counteroffensive in Kharkiv region, and it means that we didn't stop. Uh, after this threatening of nuclear war that we didn't stop after the, all the uh, claims which Russia made. And this is principally very important for all Ukrainians. Alina, are you concerned? We saw the horrific images from Zaporizhia. Over 30 people were killed in Russian shelling there. Are you concerned about these advances by the Ukrainian military and the, the arguably what Russia may do in terms of retaliation against civilians in Ukraine? Well, actually, the, yesterday was Zaporizhia, today was Kupensk. In Kupensk, we have the same situation with Kolomna of the civilians, uh, 24 dead, among them 13 children. Uh, no one stay alive. So, yes, obviously, Russians started to hit specifically the columns of the civilians. They know where they're located because this is actually established routes for uh, like a driving of people between occupied and non-occupied territories, and they hit in specifically there like uh, paying back for the counteroffensive we do. Alina Frolova there, a former deputy defense minister for Ukraine. Now, in another development, gas has begun flowing down a new pipeline from Norway to Poland that will give Central and Eastern Europe another alternative option to Russian energy. Poland had been dependent on Russia for its gas for decades until supplies were cut off in April after it refused to pay its bills in rubles. Well, the Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said that the opening of the new link marked the end of Russia's domination and blackmail in Poland's gas market. Meanwhile, a gas pipeline running from Greece to Bulgaria has been officially inaugurated as well. Bulgaria too had been dependent on Russia for gas and the new pipeline also has the potential to supply countries throughout the Balkans. The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen was present at the ceremony and stressed the importance of the pipeline for Bulgaria and for Europe's overall energy security. This pipeline is a game changer. It's a game changer for Bulgaria and for Europe's energy security. And it means freedom. It means freedom from dependency on Russian gas. 
Here in the UK, a campaign is being run to help give displaced Ukrainian women and children laptops to ensure they're able to work and learn. Peter Bulka founded the Laptops for Livelihoods campaign and he joins us live now from his home in the UK. Peter, you just returned actually from Krakow in, in Poland, near to the uh, Poland-Ukraine border, where you've been distributing these laptops that have been donated to the refugees there. I wonder, what, how did you find the refugees now that we're seven months into this war? And what was the thinking behind giving them laptops? Well, I'd say that the refugees right now, they need the help more than ever. I mean, it all started back when the war, when the war first started. Everyone was making donations. It was all clothes. It was all food. And I wanted to think about something that was just that little bit different. I wanted to think, okay, well, what could make a big difference? And really, when you take the global pandemic and you take the remote working, you saw all these displaced women that are going to have to earn money. And it just came to me that maybe if we could donate laptops, they could go out there, they could use them, and actually they could start earning money. And as we know, many people will not make it back from the war. And the harsh reality is some of these families, the mothers are going to be the breadwinners. When you put it like that, and we're seeing images of some of the people, some of the women and children who you've been donating these laptops to, it's really, really stark. But there was another a kind of almost unintended consequence because kids were using these laptops to remote learn. Absolutely. I mean, I didn't realise it myself. But yeah, it's coming really useful. And actually, while being out there and being at the refugee camp, they were telling me that the kids themselves go to two schools. They go to a normal school during the day to learn Polish. And then in the evening, they're learning online with Ukrainian schools to maintain their Ukrainian education system because they are hoping that one day they do go back. And the laptops themselves, what's your appeal? Because these are laptops, how, how does it work? They've been donated to you? They've been donated, so some members of the public have been kind enough to donate and a couple of great organisations have done so. And really, they've just wiped them, we get them over to Ukraine and then with working with humanitarian agencies, we get them distributed to where they are needed the most.